back here on the show to jump right back into the action and this is the start of a new series if you missed the last segment and if you weren't here before the break we're going to start with predicting the final division standings in each of the uh, in each of the divisions in the NFL that says the NFC East I meant it to say the NFC North I was thinking ahead to tomorrow's segment but regardless I have all the predictions for the NFC North in today's show. We're going to go through them and why I believe they're going to finish the way that they do. And we're going to go through each division as we go on towards the next seven to eight days leading up to the start of the regular season and also bringing coverage on previews and also giving some award predictions beginning of the season on MVPs, Offensive Player of the Year. You guys know the drill. All that sort of stuff is coming up. But starting off with this you know, trend of doing these predictions. We're going to start off with the NFC North and predicting some of the final predictions in these divisions. So starting off with the team I think is going to finish last in this division, I have the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings will come in last, unfortunately, this year for the for the NFC North. And I say unfortunately just because, um, you know, the Vikings, I really thought this year was going to be you know, one of the better years for them because they drafted a quarterback. They brought in a lot of, you know, talented players on both sides of the ball. You know, Dallas Turner drafting him, Jonathan Grenard in free agency, signing Stephon Gilmore and adding guys like Blake Cashman and Alex Van Ginkle and all that sort of additions to the defensive side of the ball where it was one of their weaker points. And on Stephon Gilmore specifically, Defensive back was the main position that was very much lacking, but they bring him in a great addition. But now it just seems like the injury to JJ and not just like he was going to ultimately start, you know, without question. But um, I think there was that bit of excitement there that like untapped potential there with JJ that he could come in, change the course of how a season's going just because best case scenario that is what happens with rookie quarterbacks like a Patrick or a Justin Herbert coming in unexpectedly they change the course of some of these teams but unfortunately we're not going to be able to see it and now Sam Darnold will be the starter and in all honesty I feel like Sam is going to have to be better than last year in the quarterback situations they were dealing with with Josh Downs, Nick Mullins and I'm pretty sure there was somebody else in there but I feel like by default, Sam is just going to be better. There's no doubt to me that it is going to be a better quarterback situation, especially after Kirk went down and having to cycle through a couple of quarterbacks last year. And the fact that they were close to the playoffs says a lot about this team and the amount of talent that they have. So Sam is going to be better, but still, when you compare him to all the other quarterbacks like Jared Goff, uh, Caleb Williams, Jordan Love, he is probably the least talented or at least the least successful out of all those guys. You don't talk about Sam Darnold in the same way that you talk about Caleb, Jared, and Jordan Love, right? Um, and Caleb, even as a rookie quarterback, there is just that different level of uh, just aura, as people say nowadays, right? Um, aura, talent, their skill that Caleb and Jordan might bring. And then you have Jared Goff, who might not have that same arm talent or that same special ability but just off of last year and the turnaround he's had in Detroit I think having the one quarterback that stands out in a very much quarterback driven league now it does come back to bite you and I feel like that could be something that holds the Minnesota Vikings back and um, they're going to be without TJ Hawkinson for the start of the season at least the first four weeks which is obviously tough for them and they have a tough period right at the beginning where you might not have TJ Hawkinson from week two to week seven. They play the 49ers, the Texans, the Packers, the Jets, the Lions, and the Rams in that six to five week span. So it could get off to a pretty rough start for them. And I just feel like they don't have enough at the quarterback position to keep up with the rest of the division. So to me, they're going to finish last. And then at the third spot, I have the Chicago Bears. I kind of want to Wanted to put them higher, but for the other two teams obviously remaining, I just couldn't get myself to do it, um, especially because they're very young. Yes, it's, it's exciting. Yes, you bring in Keenan Allen. 
you have DJ Moore, you draft Roma Dunze, and Caleb obviously being this generational type of quarterback, it's, it's exciting, but it still doesn't change the fact that this is still the beginning of hopefully a long journey with the Cowboys and trying to be a contender for the next whatever window, Super Bowl window, whatever you want to call it, with Caleb Williams, because I think he's going to be great. He's going to do great things for the Bears. He's not like anything that the Bears have ever had in their organization, honestly, but the fact that it, it is still the beginning of this journey doesn't change with um, how good you set it up. Yeah, it's going to help a lot in developing it, but you can't skip steps in building a contending team. Not everybody can be the Houston Texans, right? Um, everybody wants to be, and you think Caleb can be as talented as CJ Stroud, but that's a high bar to live up to, and uh, the AFC South is just not as hard, I believe, as the NFC North. So, um, at least last year it wasn't. So, with Caleb now coming in, I feel like there's going to be those growing pains. There's going to be those learning curves. And I just feel like the Lions and the Packers are a little bit further ahead or a lot further ahead in being contenders than the Chicago Bears are at this moment. And, you know, their defense is going to keep them in a lot of games. They're very underrated. They have a lot of good players. They're very much in your face, press coverage, blitzing a lot of the times. And um, while I still wanted them to get another pass rusher opposite of Montez Sweat, that unit is definitely going to lead them. And just with this offense, they have one of the easiest schedules in the NFL. But still, I can't convince myself enough to think that they're going to jump right to second or right to first in the NFC North um, just right away. So it is a process. They're going to have to go through it and... You know, if they finish third, it doesn't mean they're not going to be in the playoffs. If they have a decent record, they're still, it would still be considered a success. But just in this division, I feel like they're just not there quite yet. And then obviously the last two, very hard to make a distinction between them. But I am going with it. I am putting my chips on the line for the Green Bay Packers. And I'm going to get to them obviously after this. But um the Detroit Lions, very close with the Packers. They obviously are the reigning divisional champions in the NFC North. But I'm looking at this team, and I loved how they addressed the defensive back position with Terrion Arnold, uh, Carlton Davis, Ennis Rakestraw. They did lose C.J. Gardner-Johnson, which is a pretty big blow because of what he brought turnover-wise and just splash plays with him. But, you know, they it's still got better overall as a unit. As a secondary, they got better, adding better corners to this team, getting younger. On the offensive side of the ball, you have a guy like Jamison Williams, who everybody is wake, is waiting to see him break out. And it seems like this year could be the year, just based off of the fact that there's a lot of positive news coming from practice. You know, just from some of the clips I've seen, he looks like a lot more confident in himself and a lot more assured of how great he actually is because he had that gambling situation and then uh, dealing with an ACL injury. It was a very rough start to his NFL career, but now that he's gotten everything in line, it seems like he definitely has that talent to be the number two wide receiver on this team. To obviously Amon Ross St. Brown, you have him, Jameer Gibbs, Sam Laporta, obviously David Montgomery doesn't get enough credit. Their offensive line is one of the best in the NFL, but all that being said, I, I just think that this year with the Packers, and more so has to do with the Packers, just kind of wanting to shake things up a little bit. Um, I feel like the Packers are going to take that next step in large part to Jordan Love. And with the Lions, the biggest thing with me is just their pass rush. Aiden Hutchinson is a monster, but more so you get more people obviously drawing the coverage to his side. And I just need somebody else on that team one other guy to get double-digit sacks, or at least close to it, because Aiden Hutchinson was the only one to get double-digit sacks last year, and the next highest one after that was at five sacks. So that's just not going to do it, at least for me, to really be a division winner. You know, they're good. They're going to be a great team, but that's one thing in a critical position in how I would build a contending team that I can't just look over. So To me, the Lions will finish second. Going to have a good year, but not as good as the Green Bay Packers, I believe. I'm fully buying in to the 
Uh, Jordan loves sweepstakes. Everybody, I feel like early MVP votes, early uh, just award predictions, kind of giving my hand away a little bit here. But being in those MVP talks, I think is a real serious thing. And the way that this team is built up with the four wide receivers they really like are all, I don't think any one of them really gets above really good wide receiver because you know you have Romeo Dobbs and Jalen Reed and some of those guys Christian Christian Watson they're all they all get to about a level of really good wide receiver but none of them I think are elite top three top two wide receivers because um they're just not to the level yet of a Justin Jefferson or a Tyree Kill right no one's talking about them like that but the fact that they have four of these guys that are average good or really good I think that's something that a lot of teams are going to have problems trying to game plan around. You don't know who's going to get the ball. And Jordan Love does a great job in this scheme um, paired up with Matt LaFleur that it is just hard to, one, game plan against the scheme. But knowing that you have so many options for Jordan Love to go, go to is just a nightmare. And also, they added a guy like Josh Jacobs. A.J. Dillon is still there. They really like this rookie running back, Marshawn Lloyd, out of USC. So you have a lot of options there to use to your disposal. And last year, you know, basically it just all revolves around Jordan Love. He broke out in a major way in the playoffs. There's a different level of, you know, talent and just aura. I keep going back to that word, but really it is the best word that I can use with a guy that becomes a starter last year for the first time, has a rough start. You know, they completely flip it around the second half of the year, and he walks right into Dallas, steps on that star, and just completely takes the air out of everybody in that uh, stadium. And then he almost beats the and then he almost beats the 49ers as well. So that's the sort of different level performances in the playoffs that distinguishes guys in the playoffs and in the biggest moments. And I think Jordan Love showed that he has that sort of attitude, that sort of character with being the starting quarterback. And I just feel like I am buying into this. I'm buying into all the hype that I've been hearing about it, just watching it as well last year. I think the Packers have enough to win this division. And their defense also is very underrated. A lot of the times they don't get the uh, recognition as one of the sneakily good defenses in the NFL. So... With that being the case, I think they have enough to get it done. And they went toe-to-toe a lot of the times with the Lions and the 49ers last year. So building off of that, why can't they finish first, you know? But those are my predictions on the NFC North. Yet again, apologies for saying NFC East in the title, but it is the NFC North. That's how I think it's going to all play out. But leave your guys' thoughts on what you believe the standings will be at at the end of the year. But... With that being the case, we have one more segment to talk about on today's show, talking about Nick Chubb being on the pup list to start the year. He will miss the first four weeks of the season, so we're going to look at when he could come back and what the Browns have in store without having Nick Chubb in their lineup. That is coming up in just a few seconds.